Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Nyx Bloom Ancient ramp deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the Nyx Bloom Ancient's a 7 mana 5-5 five five enchantment elemental creature with trample that says if we tap a permanent for mana it produces three times that much mana instead. So works very nicely with our lands but also mana creatures and uh, Nyx Lotus also triples its mana with a Ancient in play, so can potentially make a lot of mana, which we can then sink into a bunch of our X spells. We've got a full playset of Hydroid Crisis and two copies of Finale of Devastation, which can also help us close out the game. So that's kind of our game plan here, ramp into a bunch of uh, Nyx Bloom Ancients and end the game with these X spells. We're not playing any copies of Nyssa, could be a fine card in the deck, but uh, just wanted to try something a little bit different since I'm uh, sure most of you have seen enough of Nyssa already. Then our deck is also playing the Elemental package since it turns out Nyx Bloom Ancient is an Elemental, so synergizes very nicely with the Risen Reef as well. And uh, then we've got some other Elementals like the Leafkin Druid and the Cavalier to synergize with the Risen Reef. So let's take a look at the entire deck here. A 2 mana full playset of Leafkin Druid can tap to add green, and if we have multiple creatures can add double green, which also gets tripled by Nyx Bloom Ancient, so it's also very synergistic there. We've got a full playset of Wolf Willow Haven, which can enchant a land and make it produce an additional green mana. Can also sacrifice it later to make a wolf if we're flooding out, but also synergizes quite nicely with our next card, which is Kira, which can untap one of our permanents. So can untap a land that's enchanted by Wolf Willow Haven. If we draw multiple havens, we often want to put them on the same land. That way, if we draw Kira, it uh, makes even more mana and also can untap a Nyx Lotus to produce extra mana. So plenty of synergy with Kira. And Kira also draws a card whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters a battlefield under our control, which is especially nice with Uro. Even if we don't escape Uro, it will still enter the battlefield and trigger Kira. And of course plenty more 4-powered creatures in the deck to help us draw more cards. Then uh, we mentioned Uro here, a nice escape card from Theros Beyond Death can gain us a bit of life back, draw some cards, and great synergy with Cavalier of Thorns, which can help us fill the graveyard to set up the escape on Uro as well. Then we've got the full playset of Risen Reef. Whenever it or another elemental enters the battlefield under our control, we can look at the top card. If it's a land, we can put it in play, otherwise it goes into our hand. So it's card draw that isn't actually card draw, which is also a benefit if we're up against Narset, which can be annoying for our deck. Next up we've got the full playset of Thunder Snapper as a 4 mana 4-4 four four that whenever we cast a spell with converted mana cost 5 or greater, draws us a card. So even if the spell gets countered, we still draw the card, which is nice against the counter spell heavy decks and plenty of uh, expensive cards in the deck to trigger the Snapper between the Cavalier, all the X spells and the Nyx Bloom Ancient as well. And then Snapper also adds for Devotion for our next card, Nyx Lotus, enters the battlefield tapped as a legendary artifact, but then we can tap it and add mana to our mana pool equal to our Devotion to the chosen color, which is going to be green for the most part in this deck and plenty of green Devotion between the Snappers, the Cavalier of Thorns and some of our cheap stuff too. And then Nyx Lotus can potentially add a ton of mana, which we can sink into all these X spells. And if we ever get to combine Nyx Lotus with Nyx Bloom Ancient, we basically get to make infinite mana. And then uh, Lotus plus Cura also means we can untap the Lotus the same turn we play it to tap it for mana right away, or potentially tap the Lotus twice in the same turn to make even more mana. So just a nice mana generation artifact. It is legendary, so we're only playing two copies, and sometimes if the opponent gets rid of our Snappers and Cavaliers, our Devotion is going to be a bit low for it, but it does seem like a nice inclusion. And then we've got the full playset of Cavalier of Thorns, which has a ton of synergies in this deck. 5 mana for a 5-6 Elemental Knight with Reach. When it enters the battlefield, we can mill the top 5 cards of our library into our graveyard and also reveal a land from among them to put into play untapped, so we can use it for mana right away. And when a Cavalier dies, we can also exile it and then return a card from our graveyard back on top of our deck. So we can maybe, if we milled all our win conditions, get one back to make sure we can end the game. So the Cavalier has a ton of synergies. It's an Elemental for the Risen Reef. It's uh, converted mana cost 5 or greater for the Thunder Snapper, and it also adds 3 Devotion for Nyx Lotus, and of course also a 4-powered creature for Kira, and it also helps us fill the graveyard for Uro so we can escape it more easily. So it kind of checks all the boxes of all the different synergies. And then topping off our curve, two copies of Nyx Bloom Ancient as another elemental for Risen Reef. 
Then we've got the full playset of Hydroid Crisis, as our mana sink of choice can help us gain more life, draw more cards, and put a giant flying trampling jellyfish in play. And then two copies of Final of Devastation, which can also help us end the game on the spot, especially with a Nyx Bloom Ancient in play, as we get to search our library or graveyard for a creature with convert mana cost X or less, and put it on the battlefield. But if X is 10 or more, creatures we control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. So sometimes in the late game, especially after playing multiple Cavalier of Thorns, and drawing a bunch of extra cards, we might end up with a library that doesn't have a lot of cards in it, so then playing another Hydroid Crisis could end up decking ourselves, so in those situations finale can make sure we can end the game in a timely fashion. And then our mana base, four islands and six forests which we can search up with our Fable Passage, and then two copies of Castle Garenbrick which is also great, especially with uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient being able to play it a turn sooner, and then four Breeding Pool and four Temple of Mystery, so that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. A uh, bit of a clunky hand. But uh, hopefully the scry can find us a land here. I think I'll get an island, so we have double blue for Uro. Opponent on maybe a mono white life gain deck. Turn to birth, so no pride mate at least. Probably go reef into reef if it's still there. Although Cascade is going to take care of it. In this case, could make an argument for Nyx Lotus and next turn go Snapper. Have Lotus available. Could go Haven into another Risen Reef, which is also quite good here. Nah, let's go with Lotus. Alright, Tarkon of Sun's Grace. Pretty scary. Although we've got quite a few flyers that can maybe contest it. I think I play Snapper first, even though I could go Haven into Snapper. Because I need both colors here in order to play Uro and Risen Reef. And then... Uh, now I can still play the Haven afterwards. And then between Uro and Reef... I guess I'll go with Reef. And that sets up our Crisis for next turn. Enchant Island in case we end up ever drawing a Kiora. That way if we untap Islands we may both colors, which could be useful. Blast Zone. And Daxos makes a Pegasus. Take three. Opponent is staring at his Nyx Lotus. Ouch, he leads intervention to destroy it. So we don't get to have our fun. Oh well, Cavalier's still fine here. Can go Haven into Cavalier. And a Temple of Mystery, Scry's Island to the bottom. Alright, Heliots is uh, pretty scary. Triggers Daxos, triggers Arkan. Five, six, Arkan of Sun's Grace. 
have to remember that the opponent can sack Alsid at any point, which will also trigger Daxos, so they could make Archon into a 6-powered creature, so blocking with Cavalier is not actually all that safe. Charming Prince can uh, make Archon up to a 6-powered creature here. Take six. Time to play Giant Hydra Crisis. Ten, so X equals eight. Alright, this next Bloom Ancient could do some work next turn. If we're still alive. And Gideon Blank Blade. This is a prime day for justice. So once again with the Alsaid, they could make Arkan uh, one bigger here too. And Arkan gained indestructible. No attacks. Alright, opponent playing it safe. So this is no longer indestructible. But Krasis can't really pressure Gideon meaningfully. So time for Nyxbloom Ancient to make an appearance. Triggers Risen Reef. Another Hydra, it seems quite good here. And then, uh, let's see, how much mana? 4 times 3, 12 mana. I guess we can play an Uro and escape it. Pad or life total to set up for this crisis. Leafkin triggers Risen Reef. And we'll pass a turn. And the next turn we should be able to finally for the win here. Last zone can take out Hydroids. I believe in you. We'll jump Heliods and then um, plug Gideon like this, take 8, seems fine. Because with the Alsades they could potentially add some more counters to their creatures with Duxos in play. Alright, time to make a lot of mana. And then uh, finally can get pretty much whatever. And we've got some tramplers in play. They can blast them to kill Krasis. But uh, 
Let's see how much mana we have here. Yeah, I guess we'll finally for everything here. So 40. Sadly, don't have Andre's Forerunners in the deck, which would make this easy. But I just want to get another Trampler, so another Nyx Bloom Ancient should do the job. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing blue-white. Don't mind keeping a land on top here. Make sure the Fabled Passage can come into play untapped once we fetch the land. Opponent on band. Could play Lotus next turn and then go Snapper into Cavalier on the following turn. Seems okay. Hopefully note the fairies bouncing Lotus. Opponent with Lotus Field, nice. Maybe also playing Kiora to untap it. Does help with escaping Uro and brought back to bring back two lands. Alright, opponent's going off here. But now it's our turn. Snapper into Cavalier of Thorns. Draw card with Snapper. Find a passage. Now I probably should have considered just playing the passage last turn instead of the basic to put more stuff in graveyard for uh, a potential escaped Uro. But I don't think we're gonna be short on cards in graveyard. Yep, there's Kyura, as expected. Untaps Lotus Fields. So 8 mana available. And Elspeth is gonna conquer. Cavalier maybe, Lotus instead. Fair enough. Guess we'll fetch to thin out the deck a little bit. Have enough mana. Play Uro. Put Passage in play. Get an island. And then I can play Temple before escaping to set up our draw step. Another Uro. Um, I guess it's not bad. We've got a bunch of lands we can put in play with it. Races on top seems nice. And we'll go after Kira. Ooh, nice. K 
Kira best the Sea God. Alright, that's definitely gonna be an issue. If I play Giant Crisis, they can steal it. I mean, maybe it's still the play, just hope to draw into some good stuff and then uh, take it from there. The Broadback also makes a lot of sense here with all these Sagas that they can potentially get back once they go to the graveyard. X equals 9. Nyx Bloom Ancient means that if we find another X spell, we can uh, really go off. Opponents got their own crisis. Kraken gets in freights. Now I don't want to play Ancient and have the opponent steal it, because with their own crisis that would be bad. So this is just a setup turn for next turn. All the reefs. Opponent steals our crisis. Could chump, could take 14. I guess I'll chump here. It's gonna be Uro, which is also quite nice with Kira. As it counts as a 4 powered creature entering the battlefield, even if you don't escape it yet. Seven mana available. Uro escapes this time. Bunch of Risen Reef triggers too. I guess I'll play another Ancients. There's Finale. So that should do it here. Although, hmm, I guess I use a lot of mana on uh, the castle, which doesn't work with the Finale here. But uh, I think we'll still have plenty.
30 should be enough. And gross barrel in response. And a Tails and to counter an activated or triggered ability, sure. Tails and also synergizing with Lotus Field, so that's a nice inclusion. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Up against Tournament Grounds and a Tournament Fervent Champion. Alright, aggressive Ember Cleave decks are definitely bad matchups. So hopefully we can avoid it. Stormfist Crusader, pretty good too here. I could block if they have a Black Lance Paragon, we're gonna be pretty sad about it. Alright, they're just gonna go with the Regisaur. Yes, if they have a cleave next turn, we're super dead. Could play a snapper. Could go Uro into another Leafkin Druids. And then next turn we could play a big Hydrate Crisis to try and contest the Regisaur. Blood Crypt on tap, that's not a good sign. And there's a cleave. All right. Yeah, just gotta concede these games. Not much we can do. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with, uh, I guess, a fine opening hand. Leafkin into Kira. Try and ramp into this Nyx Bloom, and then finally has a nice mana sink. Cavalier also nice follow up to Kira. Turn to Pride Mates, pretty good. I guess I can go Haven into Kira. And I could untap the Leafkin to save one damage, which I guess kinda does the same as not activating Kira. Harshbringer is somewhat annoying here. Stops uh, the Cavalier trigger and the Kira trigger as well. But I guess we can play Ancients and then just play a Finale next turn. Pride made indestructible. Just a Hushbringer getting in for one. Well, this is not an enter the battlefield ability, unlike uh, some of our other stuff, so it does get past the Hushbringer, but let's see how much mana can we make. Make 
could use a castle for creatures for crisis, or I can just go for finale right away if we have enough. 17, so x equals 15. Should be enough here. Get another Nyx Bloom. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, we've got a fine opening hand. Don't need another crisis at the moment. Given that we have a Risen Reef, I don't mind waiting on the Leaf Kindred. Up against Blue Green. Yeah, I think Risen Reef makes sense. Gets Ether Gusted. Put it on top. Can try again next turn. Cavalier, nice pickup. Opponent passes. Maybe a counter spell at the ready. So, how much mana can I make? Six, seven, eight. I guess if Cavalier resolves, I have enough mana for uh, the Snapper as well, potentially. But maybe I just crace this here. Which plays around a counterspell better. Still gets Mystic, but we get to draw the cards and gain the life. And haven't played land yet for turn. There's Nissa. Rise, my elemental friend. Take six. All right, so let's uh, play some Cavaliers. No need to play Krasis now that they're tapped out. And then we haven't played land for the turn yet. Guess I'll enchant the same land here. In case we find Kiora, that can make more mana. So we're pretty far ahead on lands. Cavaliers are good blockers. Can start pressuring Nissa. I still have a Krasis in hand, so don't hit our spots. Brazen Borber bounces Cavalier. So how do we feel about a giant hydroid crisis? 
pretty good. Could also just go a bunch of snappers into a bunch of cavaliers and crisis next turn, which is also reasonable. I can escape Uro, maybe they counter it, and then I can still play Cavalier. No resolves. Yeah, don't really want to give them a Cavalier to counter here. Just go with a Snapper. Alright, they're just gonna run out to Ambusher. That's fine. And then, haven't played land yet, so I can actually still play Cavalier. Hopefully don't get quenched. But get to draw a few cards here in the process. And there's a finale, which can set up lethal next turn. Next Bloom Ancient, sure, I'll take it. Make even more mana. So let's start with Ancients. Because if that resolves. We get a ton more mana. Gotta be careful that we don't deck ourselves, since we're drawing a lot of cards. Another Ambusher, sure. Another Ancient. Guess I'm down. Fourteen cards remaining. And then, uh... How much mana can I make here? Quite a bit, although I only have the one finale. So... Guess I'll start here. That resolves. Guess I'll go with the Krasis here. And attack. Don't often see a Krasis for zero, but uh, when it gets plus 40, plus 40, it's still fine. And unless my opponent's playing Fogs, they're pretty dead. A Gross Parallel. Yeah, I would say they're pretty dead. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Simic Flash. Thanks to a pretty good start. I'm pretty happy we got to see Nyx Bloom Ancient in action, since it is only a two-off. But with how many cards we end up drawing, we can usually find a copy or two. Could even consider playing Quasi Duplicate, since that can uh, get milled by Cavalier of Thorns and can potentially use it to copy the Nyx Bloom Ancient to get uh, to ridiculous amounts of mana. Didn't really get to see Lotus with uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient in play, but that's a nice combination too. Getting to triple the mana from the Nyx Lotus. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.